Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Regerberg, and I'm the CEO and founder of Face Holographic Image. We provide cell researchers with a non-invasive live cell imaging and analysis tool called Holomonitor. PHI is founded on the idea to replace the microscope objective or lens with a computer algorithm. At the time, this technology did not have a name. Today, it is known as quantitative phase imaging or QPI for short. In today's presentation, I will explain the basic principle behind quantitative phase imaging. I will talk about live cell imaging using hollow monitoring. I will also finally talk about how view, we view that QPI can be used within quality control for generated medicine applications. There are several forms of quantitative phase imaging. The most commonly used form is what is called holographic microscopy. A diode laser illuminates the cell culture and the cells within the sample. When this happens, the parallel laser light is deformed according to the shape of the cells. In a standard microscope, this is not visible because it is a phase shift. The light is shifted in its phases. To see this, you need a second reference beam. As you can see here in, in the setup, it is split from the original laser. And these two beams are what is called coherent. When they are reunited, they will create an interference pattern. And this interference pattern is what is, is the hologram. And from this hologram, it is possible to calculate the image or several images of the cells. There are two major advantages with quantitative phase imaging. The first one is that the cells are much easier segmented by a computer algorithm. On the left here is a traditional phase contrast image. And the light intensity across or through this line, over this line, is plotted here. And as you can see, it's difficult to tell where does the cell begin or end when you go across this profile. When you look at the quantitative phase image, it looks quite differently. As you can see here in the corresponding plot, the cells are very easily identified when you follow the, the intensity, image intensity profile. And below uh, the 3D image that you're seeing up here is plotted. And you can see that it's quite easily, you can quite easily identify the individual cells as peaks in this image here. However, if you move over to the phase contrast image, I mean, it is a mess simply. And this is why um, computers have, even today have so, such a hard time segmenting phase contrast imaging and identifying individual cells. But in holographic or QPI images, it's a much easier task for the computer. The second advantage of, of QPI is that images are focused after they are recorded. From the hologram, a number of images are created at various focal distances. The mechanics are not moved. Instead, a parameter in the reconstruction algorithm is changed. And here you can see what it has been set to when these images have been created by the software. At the bottom, uh, the, the focus is out of, out of focus and it gradually becomes or comes into focus when the parameter in the software is changed. And then, of course, when the parameter is changed too much, it will 
uh, the cells will, or the cell in this case, will be out of focus. And this is how the autofocus uh, in uh, holographic microscopy uh, works. It creates an image stack and then it selects uh, the image with the highest contrast. And that is the image which is in focus. So it, it's, it's similar to how uh, autofocus is done in conventional microscopy. However, the difference is that there's no need for any mechanical movement. Effectively, this creates a focal depth, which is approximately or up to uh, 100 times deeper or greater uh, than in traditional microscopy. And this is a tremendous advantage. One of the issues with traditional microscopy and why we, I really got interested in, in, in holographic microscopy was because of the many difficulties you have with the net, very shallow focal depth at high magnitude. Holomotor exploits these advantages to create a round the clock single cell imaging and analysis on a population level. The system is completely non invasive and operates inside a cell, incub cell incubator. The system is equipped with a motorized stage, which allows it to image in in multiple positions in multiple cell culture vessels. There is also various sample holders to allow uh, to be compatible with uh, various cell culture formats. Everything is controlled from the software, uh, which creates uh, the, uh, the time-lapse images that are analyzed by the software to provide data and results for the customer. The customer typically interacts with the instrument through the software. Uh, the instrument itself, as it's in, in the incubator, it, it's, it's in the dark most of the time and uh, it's controlled from, by the users from the user interface. In this particular case, it's our, our customer at the University of Bergen who have put together a holomonitor control room. And here on the screen, you see a one time lapse uh, of some individual, I think it's actually in a, a smaller organoid. And on the left here uh, is a wound healing experiment where you see some of the cells have been starting to migrate over to the other side. The time-lapse movies created by Hall and Monitor contains an enormous amount of information. The key to harvest this information is to track the cells. Because the cells are easily identifiable in the holographic imaging, images, it's possible to automate the cell tracking. Once tracked, it's possible to study cell division rate, how cells transform, and how they change morphology over time. On the left, you see a cell which curls up and divides into two daughter cells. As the cells have been tracked, we can study the cell movement of first the mother cell and then the two daughter cells which take off in separate directions. We can also study the, the cell morphology, in this case, the cell volume of the cells. Here you have the mother cell and the two daughter cells after division. Now it's also possible to create a cell tree to quantify, for instance, cell, cell division. Now, if we quantify this, for a number, a large number of cells and cellular events and feed this into a machine learning algorithm. It would be possible to actually characterize whether a sample has sufficient quality to move further down in the process chain.
we see three application areas for the type of quality control I described in the previous slide. Firstly, when the sample is extracted from the patient. Secondly, after the sample has been transported to the biomanufacturing for further processing. Not only initially, but through the process until the sample uh, is ready to be shipped to the hospital for implant implantation in the patient, where it's call quality control the final time. Now, as the this, this time-lapse images are very easily acquired due to the autofocusing functionality, these can be stored for regulatory monitoring and traceability purposes. Thank you for your attention. Please find more information about Holo Monitor online. You're also welcome to visit our virtual booth during the event. Enjoy the talks.